There are hundreds of great characters and even more spectacular feats to calculate in One Piece. However, while many of these might be cool, none of them hold a candle to the literal coolness of the Iceman himself, Marine Admiral Alkiji, and his ultimate attack, Ice Age. So, join me, if you dare, as we delve deep into the art of alchemy, currently called chemistry, and use a style of numeric quantification made popular in Mesopotamia, now called math, all in order to calculate the power of this Ice Age. Ice Age. Hello Internet, Jojo here, and welcome to Idea Shock, where, so far, we've discussed a lot of characters that have fire or heat-based abilities, and because of that, I felt that it was only fair and proper to discuss powers on the opposite end of the spectrum. Before you ask, no, I'm not doing this video just because I want to talk about One Piece again. Okay, yes, that might be part of it, but that's not the only reason. It just so happens that I actually do like calculating ice feats, they're actually pretty fun. Now, there's a lot to love about One Piece, I've said this time and time again, but one of my favorite things is how they introduce characters. Introducing the world's greatest swordsman, have him cut a boat in half. How about a pirate emperor? Oh, just have him jump off a sky island and walk it off. A marine admiral? Just freeze an entire ocean like the mad lad he is. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what we have for today. Now, this feat comes to the end of the Long Ring Long Land story arc. And Aokiji does this because he wants to help this old man travel across several islands on foot. See, even among all the marines, there are still some chill dudes. Let's just forget about the fact that almost immediately afterwards, he attacked the Straw Hats and almost ended up killing them. The, the important thing is that Aokiji's a cool dude. Scratch that, the most important thing is that he froze an entire ocean and a sea monster in only a few seconds. But one thing at a time. To start off, we're not given much information about this attack, but we do know that we can see absolutely nothing on the horizon in this panel. As we discussed in the video where I calculated Luffy's power, the One Piece planet is over 820,000 kilometers in diameter, and that's a minimum considering how we measured it. With this in mind, and using this panel to find that we are viewing at a height from about 44 meters up, and the distance to the horizon is about 191 kilometers away. The thing is, this is just the minimum distance between two of these islands. You see, there are two islands between where Aokiji, the old man, and the Straw Hats are, and where the ice will eventually end up reaching. If we look at this panel, we can see that these islands themselves are actually larger than the distance between them. So, assuming that the distance to the horizon, 191 kilometers, is the distance to the next island, and comparing that to the size of the island, and these islands must be about 294.86 kilometers in diameter. Multiplying the distance between two of these islands by three, for the distance between all four of the islands, and then adding the diameter of the two islands as well, because the ice must have moved past them, and we find that Aokiji's ice covered about 1,164.7 kilometers. Assuming that the ice froze in a half circle with this distance to the target being the radius, and this ice must have covered an area of about 2.13 trillion square meters, or over 822,000 square miles. Now, the Pacific Ocean has a depth of about 4,000 meters, and considering that Aokiji calls this move Ice Age, it's fair to say that this is the ice's depth as well. So, multiplying that area, we find that Aokiji must have frozen 8.52 quadrillion cubic meters of water, or using the density of salt water, about 1,025 kilograms per cubic meter, he froze over 8.733 quintillion kilograms of salt water. This is the equivalent of just under 54,000 Mount Everest. With the fusion energy of water being about 334,000 joules per kilogram, this means that Aokiji can generate about a minimum of 697.13 teratons of TNT in just one attack. Now, Aokiji says that this ice should last about a week, and some have interpreted that to mean that after a week this ice will no longer be safe to walk on. But let's remember, Aokiji has total control of all the ice he makes and can decide when to break it. I mean, we see that he can make half an island have a temperature well below freezing for at least two years, so one week, that's nothing. In my opinion, he meant that the ice would last that long because he would let it stay there and maintain its structure. After all, this is the grand line. There is no shortage of monsters, pirates, and freak weather that could damage it. So, assuming that he would be maintaining it for the entire week, 
Aokiji would have had to counter the energy from the sun that's coming down and heating up the ice. The sun releases about 1,368 watts per square meter. In case you don't know, a watt is just a fancy term for joule per second. So, taking the surface area of the ice and applying this to it, we find that in the daylight hours, this ice will be taking about 696 kilotons of TNT per second. Using the daylight hours from somewhere like the Bahamas, and we find that in one week, this ice would have received a total of 4.09 gigatons of TNT. However, that's not all the energy that he would have to counter. You see, even in cold storage, one US ton of ice will absorb about 12,000 British thermal units of energy per hour from residual heat. That's actually how ice makes things cold, by absorbing the heat around them. In a way, ice is like a heat sponge. Actually, no, ice is exactly a heat sponge. Now, before I reveal the final result, allow me to ask you to subscribe. It only takes about a second or two, and it will let you get notified of when I release other videos. And trust me, if you like this video, then you will love some of the videos that I have in the works. So hit that button and make sure you're getting notified. Got it? Great. In order to get back on track with this feat, we just need to apply the previously mentioned 12,000 British thermal units per ton per hour to the weight of Alkiji's ice. Doing that, we find for this entire feat, he must have generated about 701.77 teratons of TNT. That's a lot. It's over 5,000 times the energy that the entire world produces in a single year. On a side note, Aokiji freezes the entire ocean in one panel. And generally, unless there's another way to measure time, we take this one panel to be the equivalent of one spoken word at a pace of 160 words per minute. This means that it only took 0.375 of a second to freeze the entire ocean. And using the distance that we found the ice reached, Aokiji's power should be able to move at a speed of about 6,947,360 miles per hour, or Mach 9055. In case some of you doubt me, at this point I don't know why, remember that Aokiji was able to counter the power of Whitebeard tsunamis, which, as we discussed in a previous video, sits at around 660 teratons of TNT. So, either way, Aokiji is pretty powerful. Having said all that, that's really all I have for this video, and I don't feel like dragging this out any longer. So, as always, thanks for watching, see you next time, remember to stay spectacular, Jojo, out. Ice. Ice.